Hi, in this video, we'll discuss Active Directory, specifically an introduction to Active Directory. All right, so let's get started. So let's start with the topic outline. We'll be dealing with Active Directory. So what is Active Directory? Isn't it what it used to be? Let's see. Active Directory roles and some information about Active Directory. So we're going to start the lecture, the discussion with what an Active Directory is. Okay. So by definition, an Active Directory is a collection of services, server roles and features used to manage identity and access for and to resources on the network. Active Directory covers five roles in it. This includes domain services. So this deals with internal accounts, authorization, and authentication. Federation services, which includes network access for external resources. The third one is the certificate services, which includes identity and non-repudiation. Lightweight directory services, we're talking about the application templates here. Rights management services, the content security and control. So that's an active directory roles. Okay, so basically an active directory includes identity, access and centralized management. Okay. Now, what are the active directory roles? So in the next few slides, I will cover each of these Windows roles with a summary of what it is and what it does. Okay, so let's start with the ADDS or the Active Directory Domain Services. So um, this includes users, computers, and palaces. This is what we're going to manage. This is what we're going to be working within this role. The next one is the Active Directory Certificate Services or the ADCS. So this includes service, client, servers, and user identification. Verification of identification and in some cases slightly more advanced security topics, non-repudiation, and verification of contents. Okay, so the next one is the Active Directory Federation Services or the ADFS. So this includes resource access across traditional boundaries. Okay, the allowing of resources in the organization to be accessed by security principles in other organizations without needing some of the traditional trust mechanisms. Okay. Next is the Active Directory Rights Management Services or the ADRMS. So it maintains security of data. It's a way to maintain the security of data in the organization, both within and outside the organization. Okay. And the last one is the Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services or the ADLDS is it's really a copy of the structure of active directory domain services and we'll cover that later in the subsequent module or videos okay now what is adds or the active directory domain services so a directory service is both a directory information source and the service that makes the information available and usable okay so in other words this is simply a phone book okay so this is potentially the biggest the most important but most prolific role in the active directory suite so a directory service is both the directory information source as what i've said and defined earlier and the service that makes the information available and usable Okay, 
So in this case, information about servers, users, clients, network devices, applications, and email servers. So this information is both about and provided to each of these categories by the Active Directory Domain Services. Manageability, security, and interoperability all provided in a centralized, much more easily managed method than without this technology. This includes the Windows Server, Management Profile, Network Information, Printers, and Shares. You also have the Windows Users, so Account Information, Privileges, Profiles, and Policies. So Windows Client, Management Profile, Network Information Policies. For the Network Devices, you've got Configurations, the Quality of Service Policy, and the security policy now for the applications so server configurations the single sign-on or the sso and app specific directory information now email servers is included here okay and this deals with the mailbox information and address book okay so these are the active directory domain services and this caters manageability, security, and interoperability, as mentioned earlier. Okay? Next, what does ADDS do? So, scalable, secure, and manageable infrastructure for user and resource management. So, it includes stores and manages information about the network resources, provides support for directory enabled applications such as the Microsoft Exchange servers which are being used for email so allows for centralized management okay now it is all those things in one package this is where we use active directory domain services it let us manage essentially as many objects users computers printers, shares as we can cram into a given that we have the hardware to support in a centralized manner, all from a single console potentially. It also allows us, however, to delegate that administration out of other administrators in an organization. So it stores and manages information about the network resources, provide support for directory enabled applications such as the Microsoft Exchange server as mentioned here on the second bullet okay and in this case there is a direct connection to Active Directory by Exchange server and it allows for centralized management and then the delegation of what centralized management out of other potential business units or administrators okay Next, what is ADCS? So user, entities, users or computers, certificate, stores responsible for repositories and revocation. Okay, so the ADCS is the Microsoft implementation of a public key infrastructure or PKI. PKI is a set of hardware, software, people, policies, and procedures needed to create, manage, distribute, use, store, and revoke digital certificates. Okay, so request, certificate retrieval, and certificate revocation are all bits and pieces of the ADCS. Okay, so what are the components of this? So let's start with an end entities. It could be a user or computers. So the end user consumers or of PKI services. Okay, so as mentioned, this could be a person or a computer. The next one is a certificate authority or the CA. Trusted party responsible for the management of digital certificates. So the CA is the center of the PKI trust model. A CA is responsible for issuing signed digital certificates, maintaining certificate repository, 
and managing revoked certificates and the public list of those certificates the certificate revocation list or also known as the CRL okay so the third one would be the CSR or the certificate signing request so this is a document uh, generated by an end entity used to enroll for a certificate so the request contains information about users such as distinguished name and public key or the signature okay so the fourth component would be the public digital certificate and certificate pass so a digital certificate is a public component in pki okay so a public certificate represents the credentials for a given end entity by connecting an entity to a specific public key so the end entity represented hold or holds the private key that corresponds to that certificate so certificates can be used for a number of security measures such as uh, digital signatures to verify the origin integrity of information and non-refugiation okay so the last one would be the certificate revocation list right or the crl so this is a list of revocate revoked certificates this list is checked during certificate verification by a certificate holder to verify the revocation status for a given certificate so online certificate status protocol or the ocsp is a CRL alternative that can be used to retrieve revocation and status information for a certificate as well. Okay, now what does ADCS do? So it provides customizable services for issuing and managing digital certificates. Okay, at the end of the day, Certificate services issues and manages certificates. It's that simple. Okay, so this includes certificate authorities, the CA web, uh, web enrollment, okay, the online responders, the network device enrollment service or the NDES, the certificate enrollment web service. And the certificate enrollment policy web service okay now it does this in a number of different ways and with a number of different tools so all of the tools listed here certification authorities certification web enrollment the online responders okay the network device enrollment services Certificate Enrollment Web Service and the Certificate Enrollment Policy Web Service are all the pieces used to manage those certificates that they're issuing in their management. Now, what are, what are these uh, certificates? Okay, So by using the Server Manager, you can install the following components in the ADCS. Okay, So let's start with the first one here, which is the Certification Authorities, or shall we call it CAs. Okay, so CAs issue certificate to users, computers, and services, and manage certificate validity. The CA web enrollment, okay, so web enrollment allows users to connect to a CA by means of web browser in order to request certificates and retrieve certificate revocation list or CRL. So the third one would be the online responders. The online responder service sends a signed response containing requested certificate status information to clients. Okay, so the next one is the Network Device Enrollment Service or the NDES. The Network Device Enrollment Service or NDES allows network devices to obtain certificates when they don't have domain accounts. Okay. Next is Certificate Enrollment Web Service. The Certificate Enrollment Web Service allows the certificate enrollment by users and computers 
using SSL to enable policy-based certificate enrollment disconnected or non-domain joint computers and users. And the last one, certificate enrollment policy web service. This delivers certificate enrollment policy information to computers and users to enable the certificate enrollment web service. All right. Okay. Next, what is the ADFS? So ADFS is, of course, the Active Directory Federation Services. Okay. It is a software or software component that facilitates the cross-organizational access of systems and applications. So this lets me, as an IT administrator, either share my resources out of the world, okay, or let my users access resources in some else's organization, depending on which side of this equation I happen to be on, okay? So it provides simplified secured identity federation and a web single sign-on, okay, or the SSO capabilities. So the real beauty of federation services, there are other ways to do this built into the Microsoft technology. So what FS let us do, it make it seamless, okay? I log in once, that's all I have to do, okay? So I access the application via the web. That application is actually going to be my, or to use my credentials. So in my organization, to authenticate and authorize me into that application in another organization, okay? So it enables the creation of trust relationships, provide access to applications and provide single sign-on between two different directories for a web-based applications. Okay. Next, what does ADFS do? Okay. So ADFS simplifies end user access to systems and applications by using a claims based access authorization mechanism to maintain application security okay you can deploy adfs to provide employees or customers with seamless access to web-based resources in any federation partner organization on the internet without requiring employees or customers to log on more than once okay so it enables the creation of trust relationships between two organizations. Okay? Provides access to applications between organizations. Retain complete control over your employee or customer's identities without using other sign-on providers like Windows Live ID, Liberty Alliance, and others. Okay? So provide single sign-on between two different directories for web-based applications. So provide your employees or customers with a web-based SSO experience when they need remote access to internally hosted websites or services. Okay. Next, what is an ADRMS? Okay. So ADRMS or the Active Directory Rights Management Service is an information protection technology. It works with the application to safeguard our digital information, right? So um, what this allows for, if I'm an author, okay? If I'm an author, it allows me to create content as simple as, example, Word document or even an email, okay? It allows me to protect that Word document or email using those. In this case, ADRMS aware applications, Word or Outlook. Okay? Now, it lets me set what can be done with that data after it's been created. I tapped my Word document. I typed my email. I tell that application, protect this document and don't let somebody do something with, the, with it or with the document. Okay, print it, copy it, forward it to another mail recipient if it's an email in particular and then 
that protection follows that document elsewhere or anywhere okay so the recipient of that information having access to my rms infrastructure though various means okay or through various means both public and private will be able to verify that that document is indeed accessible to them but then again be restricted with what they can do with it okay so that's active directory rights management services or the adrms all right now what does adrms do okay so it allows individual and administrators to specify access permissions the documents workbooks and presentations it is necessarily limited to just these three pieces of information again i mentioned emails okay so you can expand this out to either or to other bits of data prevent sensitive information from being printed forwarded or copied by unauthorized people so we could prevent access and usage uh, access and usage restriction and enforce no matter where the information is located okay so if i created or if i create a word document i protect it with rms i emailed it to someone else outside of microsoft or outside the organization they are still subject to the restrictions of that document and even then given that they can access the rms infrastructure through some other means in the first place okay next what is adlds okay so adlds is a hierarchical file based directory store the adlds is both the directory information source and the service that makes the information available and usable okay so some options except without a couple of the key or key pieces that adds provides so windows users network devices applications and email servers so i can use active directory lightweight directory service to store replicate and access information okay the same information that i can track in active directory domain services names locations application information specific okay i can use the adlds to access and use that information so now the image here are also used in the slide regarding the adds so it was left in place here intentionally to demonstrate the similarities between adds and the adlds okay now these are the components of the adlds you've got the windows user which includes account information privileges profiles and policies okay for the network devices config quality of service security policy so application server config sso app specific directory information the email servers mailbox information and address book okay so that's the Active Directory LDS manageability, security, and operability. As mentioned, it is similar with what we have discussed previously. All right. Next, what does ADLDS do? So the Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services, or the ADLDS, provides a lightweight directory access protocol, or LDAP, compliant directory and associated services. So it is used to provide authentication and directory services for custom written, third party, and other enterprise applications. All right. So the directory service provides flexible support for directory enabled applications without the dependencies and domain related restrictions okay, of the ADDS. So Active Directory Domain Services is a management tool for an organization so it comes with the overhead of that requirement 
it's a management tool okay so lightweight directory service or services is merely an information store but it is a structured information store based on the structure of the active directory domain services so provide directory service for directory enabled applications without incurring the overhead of domains and forests okay no requirement for a single schema throughout a forest so i can customize the adlds as much as i'd like all right so thank you for sticking around that's the end of our video thanks for watching